Hello everybody, my name is Alan from CyberLab and today will be another video about servers. In this video specifically we're going to talk about not only NAS but the first part of the video can be applicable for any server that you use. Doesn't matter if you use OpenMedia Vault, you use TrueNAS or use Knowledge NAS will be exactly the same steps. The second part of the video will be more focused for Knowledge NAS but you can use those information as a reference when you set up your server. So in this way you wanted to know what exactly I want to learn in this video. And it's simple how you can make your server faster. How you can guarantee that your server is reliable and you're not gonna wait too much to download some packaging and you're gonna have the maximum speed possible for your system. So in this way, once that you understand it, you can look for your setup and check if those things you are doing or not. And if it's doing, you are additive the maximum speed of your server if not, you can improve it. So, if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're going to show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider yourself to subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed, and let's understand a little bit more about it. As I told, in this video, we're going to focus on some steps that can make your system a little bit more fast and you're gonna have a better performance. Not necessarily that this will change all the game, but at least you have some steps that you can put in order to basically you have the best of your system, best of your NAS. This is first step will focus for any system that you're using. Doesn't matter if you're using Knowledge NAS, if you're using Atro NAS or other things, you can apply exactly the same steps. So first thing and more important of all, it's a internet wired. Why is internet wired? A lot of people, because of commodity, because it's a rent house, or because it's basically not visible to do it, they don't use internet cable. And because they're not using the internet cable, they cannot get the best performance of the system. This is because Wi-Fi work, yes, work, but uh, they increase the amount of latency and they will have a maximum speed that you can have. This will make your system not so stable. So, normally, if you use a 1 Gbps of speed, you can get around 100, 112 megabytes of download speeds and upload speed. And if you use Wi-Fi, potentially you're going to have 12. Why? Because you cannot get maximum of your speed. Either that you use Wi-Fi 6 is still your big bottleneck. This reason is so important to you to try to get a network cable in your house. But sometimes, as I told, it's not feasible because you have old building, because you are renting that build or anything, it's not easy only to start to cut things around and sometimes it's not interesting for you to have look like a cable in the middle of the house passing only because you want to have this fast speed. But you have other solutions that you can do in order to cover this problem. Some of the solutions is use a different adapters. I believe that most of the houses, they have a coaxial, they have a TV, connection in the house and this coaxial can transmit a quite a lot of information so in this way you could use a mocha network if you come here my screen this one is one example of mocha basically you get your coaxial let's come here you get coaxial one side you put in and here you connect the network so one of those will be a receiver and another one will be a transmitters and that they will throw all this internet or all the information to the TV signal. And one thing that's interesting, one, some of the packagings, you already can have one of those adapters. These adapters will guarantee that uh, they will split the signal. Part of the signal can go for the TV, what it's a uh, signal required for the TV, and the rest will go specifically for your network. And in this way, you can get pretty much almost gigabyte internet and you can have a really fast performance and will basically work better with low latency. And this one, in my opinion, will be the best option. They are not the cheapest one, but will be the best option to not get internet cable for all the house. But sometimes you don't have as well a coaxial cable and you don't want to use internet. What are the options that you can use? Yes, you can use a power line. You can use one of those 
which you use your normal electricity cable and that they will transmit the data. They will make sure that all the data is going to those plugs. What's the problem for it and why I didn't say that this one will be the best option? Because these rely on the your cable in your walls. So if you have any loss of signal or have any connection that's not properly done in your electricity, they will not give a best performance. They will get some loose and if you turn on some equipments that uh, increase the quantity of noise in your system, they will have a really bad signal. What means equipment that increase the noise of a signal? Any motor that will increase the noise in the system, they will make your system not be great. Either that they say that this one is uh, 1 gigabyte or 1000 megabytes of speed, do not achieve this one, they will never achieve this one. Principally, if you use some uh, expansion or power lead, principally if you don't have a new electricity cable, you're gonna have more loss, but this one will be better than Wi-Fi because the amount of uh, signal or the latency will be less. They will not give so much problems for you and they work basically much better than if you only use uh, your Wi-Fi. So this is the two options that you can use as far as I know and that override the need to get the cable. But in my opinion, if you can, can get the cable, go for the cable, will be the more reliable, will basically just work without any problem. We talk first about network. What's the second step that you need to consider? It's the storage capacity. So if I come here in my storage NAS, I come here in my storage manager, you can see that I have uh, 4.33. So it's uh, just a little bit over half of my storage is full and the rest is free. But because I'm using hard drives, once that this system starts to go close for 8%, my system starts to be really slow. Why I say it's really slow? Because hard drives, they need to basically the disk and that all the data will need to cop in this disk. If you have a too low amount of space in this pool, it means that they will not be able to cope so efficient and they will have some loss and it will take some time for try to locate this data. Don't worry, if you use SSD, this is not for you because SSD work totally different. You can go really close for the limit and because they have random location, they will work much faster and not affect anything. But if you use hard drive, yes, you're gonna see a loss of speed or lots of performance principally if you start to go close for your 8%. So always monitor and if you achieve this limit and go for 8%, try to clean some data that's not required or try to do some archive for the data. Archive that I say it's the data that you don't use for a long time, put in one or two external hard drives and keep as a backup, as archive. If you need it, you can use. If you don't need, will be keep it there for a long time. Only make sure that this archive is a reliable system, not only get, uh, let's say, a old hard drive copy it and hopefully will still last for long, because this you don't guarantee that it will be safe. And principally, if you start to go more close for 99, close for 100%, your system will be really crap and will not work so well. So suppose that your storage is under 8%, and you already start to achieve that bottleneck. Why I say bottleneck? Because the network for your house, if you put a normal cable and put a normal internet connection, they will be one gigabps. And when I say one gigabps, it not means that they will download a one gigabyte, they will download a one gigabit per second. And if you get one, one byte, it's equal for eight bits. So one gigabps will be around 125 megabytes per second, what you're never going to be able to achieve it unless it's ideal, perfectly word. We know that I have loss in the cable, so in my case, normally I can get around 112, 115 megabytes per second, what it's pretty good if I use for one gigabyte pass, but sometimes this one could be your bottleneck. Why say your bottleneck? Your system is really fast, but you cannot get a little bit faster because you don't have that extra speed for a network. And one of the solutions to do it is change your basically system. You change your network system and you start to put 2.5 or 10 gigabyte speed. In my opinion, 10 gigabyte speed is a little bit overkill and cost is a little bit high because you need to use a really powerful system. If you go for 2.5, you can have quite fast system. 
and you don't need to spend so much money to do this upgrade and then you're gonna see that uh, your speeds will go around 250 and will work quite well in the case of Snowlogy NAS I have an old model what I cannot replace my card what I need to do in this case if you guys come here I have uh, two LANs I have LAN 1 what has one IP address and I have LAN 2 those two LANs is connect for the same uh, uh, switch what it's allowed to give in 2.5 and from that switch they go to my computer and my computer have a, a network card what is allowed 2.5 but you can have a USB adapters you can have other things that guarantee that your speed is 2.5 what will give a little bit extra performance principally if you want to edit something or you want to do video edition or photo edition you're gonna seal or you're gonna feel a little bit more if you only go to download the upload and if you can wait two three minutes more will not make so much a difference this one will affect more for edit directly in your system other thing that I will say that's really important is your rate why I say your rate you can have different configuration of rate you can have rate 1 rate 2 rate 5 rate 6 but in my opinion the best things will be the mirror rate or you have rate 5 it means that you can have a mirror data which will be copying two different hard drives and that uh, when you read it they can read for both hard drives or RAID 5 that's what I like more that will give a little bit more gain for speed when you read not so much for write but when you read they have a section for different hard drives and it means that each hard drive will be able to maximize the speed of reading you're only gonna feel any difference if you have a 2.5 gigabytes network or 10 gigabytes if you only use a slow internet speed or a low network connection you're not gonna feel so much different for this gain of read other thing that will be more applicable for Synology NAS but other systems have these options well is indexing this indexing will take a long time principally if you copy lots of data because all the time that you copy Synology NAS will try to read all this data and try to make sense and index it in the database so once that you want to use Synology Drive or look the pictures at Synology Photos they will be available and be more fast for you to access it but you have a penalty that they will use a lot of capacity for your system so suppose that if you are running a busy day and you copy lots of data for a Synology NAS they will try to index it straight away what you can set for don't index you can make sure that your system just will access it but will not index all this data and then you're not going to have a loose performance so you can set up that so the index can start at 8 o'clock in the afternoon in the time that everyone is right back home and that your system is running by themselves and that will index everything other thing that's interesting for you have uh, in mind it's all those information that I told so far it's only for internal use so you're using your network and you know that everything is focused for your network but let's say that you don't want to use your network you want to use someone else and you want to use a VPN to access this SMB what's the problem for it? don't do it basically if you want to access only Word, Excel yes you can do but if you try to access more heavy files look like videos you want to download something they will not work so well because SMB was made for a local network which has a really low latency if you start to choose a VPN depend on what distance that you have let's say that uh, my service is in Brazil and I'm here in England so the distance is really high and that's the time that the light speed go until that my server and I come back I will be adding more latency what SMB was not made for it and then will be really slow and not work so well so in this way have in mind that if you want to access this data and try to use a VPN forget it and then now we start the part that it will be more focused for Synology NAS because Synology NAS have a Synology Drive other systems have a Nextcloud and other things but Synology NAS work basically you can download the application and you can have a three options you can have only transfer only backup and you can have a sync and this kind of syncs guarantee that all the data that sits in your server have exactly the same copy in your computer and once that you connect to the internet they will compare both files and make sure that two files for one place will be available in the other place so in this way you know that your data is sync 
and you have a data local and that's it. in this time you're going to be able to access your data using the speed of your local hard drive of course have a penalty of space if you have a lot of data and you don't want to have all this data in your computer but you need to access everything then you're going to have a problem because potentially you can go out of space but this one will be the fast option for you access external create a sync and that's all the data will copy or download and have both copies in the same time but one thing that will affect will be affect the speed of your internet why I say the speed of internet not everyone have a mirror speed upload and download so sometimes the provider offer look like a speed of 7 megabps of download but the upload is around 5 or 7 so in this way it's 10 times less to do the upload compared for the load if you are only browsing the internet you're not going to see any difference but remember if your server is in somewhere and you need to access this data from your server basically your server will do the upload for the data to the network and then you can download so if you have a 7 megabps of upload this will be your bottleneck this maximum speed so if you need to access your data either for vpn or access for small NAS, have a look in the internet that have exactly the same speed of download or exactly the same speed of upload then in this way you're not going to feel so much loss of speed other thing that uh, will save all this trouble for you to need to upload download everything it's use some remote desktop yes you can have a lot of different applications i'm not explaining which application that i use but you can have different application what you can connect for a computer that's exactly in that network what normally I do, I have my laptop, I use a remote desktop that access that computer that it's already in my network and I do all my job exactly in that computer. So in this way, you don't transmit so much data, you don't have so much effects of this low speed of internet of download upload. Latency yes, can affect a little bit, but not affect so much for you edit something because it will be a few milliseconds more for you to pause or for you to do something what in SMB they will crash if you use a remote desktop basically the computer it's in your network so will kind of simulate that your network with a little bit more latency so if you need to edit something potentially it's the best option to have your computer serve in your network and have another computer using remote access only to access your local computer and do all the job so in this way, we arrive in the end of this video where we explain some ways that you can have a little bit fast performance or faster speed when you access your server and how you can have pretty much the best of your system. So if you like this video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave your like, consider subscribing for the channel if you're not subscribed and see you next time. Bye.